In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve systems of equations algebraically so that you can obtain exact solutions. Now, there are two different types of methods to solve a system. One is by substitution and one is by elimination. I'm going to show you how to use the substitution method first on a linear quadratic system. Now, for this equation here, this question, we're going to first isolate one of the variables from the linear function and preferably the one without the square in the quadratic. So let me show you what this means. So here I can see that I have 3x minus y equals 8. In the other equation, I have x squared minus 2x plus y equals 7. I see that the x is being squared. So what I want to do is in my linear equation, I want to isolate the y so that I can substitute into the other y down here. So what I want to do I'm going to draw an arrow to show that I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to move the 8 to the left side. So I have 3x minus 8. And isolating my y to the right, I have that equals y. So what I'm now going to do is take my y equal to 3x minus 8. I'm going to substitute it into the y and replace this y value. So now I have x squared minus 2x plus, I'm going to put brackets to show that I'm substituting this expression in for the y, and 3x minus 8, and that equals 7. All right, so simplifying, I get x squared plus x, and then negative 8 minus the 7, I'm going to have negative 15, and that equals 0. All right, I can see that I can't factor, so I'm going to use my quadratic formula. So x is equal to negative b, and my b value here is 1, so I have negative 1, plus or minus, and it's the square root of b squared. So 1 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, and then times c, which is negative 15. All of this is all over 2 times 1. So simplifying, I get negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 61 all over 2. Okay, so that's great. So this is what x is. Now I need to find out what my y is. And notice that I already have y isolated here as 3x minus 8. So I have y is equal to 3. So negative 1 plus root 61 over 2 and then minus 8. So I need to substitute each one independently to figure out my y value. So plugging this in, I'm going to get negative 3. So I'm going to distribute plus 3 root 61 all over 2. And I'm going to get a common denominator so I can join the two together. So this will be minus 16 over 2 because this is 8 over 1 times top and bottom by 2. And then I simplify and I get negative 3 minus 16. So I have negative 19 plus 3 root 61 all over 2. All right, so one of my points or my solutions is negative 1 plus root 61 all over 2 and negative 19 plus 3 root 61 all over 2. And my other one is going to be negative 1 minus root 61 all over 2. Now, if I just put another, knowing that I'm going to do the same thing, but this time it's going to be minus, I can put my minus over here, and you'll see that the only difference will be that the sign, instead of being plus in the middle, will be minus. So I'm just going to rewrite the other one without actually showing all of that. It will be um, negative 19, and then minus 3 root 61 all over 2. So this one works out that I don't have to reshow that because the plus will give me a positive and the minus in the middle will give me a minus in the middle for my y value. And so here are my two solutions. All right, now I'm going to show you how to solve a linear quadratic using the elimination method. So when we're using the elimination method, the first thing we want to do is we want to align the terms that have the same degree vertically. Okay, so in this example, what I'm going to do, I'm going to rewrite it over here. 
And I like to have my higher degree on the top. So this one has an x squared, so I'm going to put it on the top. But it doesn't really matter, actually. But I'm going to line my x's and my y's and my constants together. Okay, second step, eliminate one of the variables, preferably, preferably the one without the square. And since we can see that the x is the one that has the squared, we are going to eliminate the y's. And we're going to do this by multiplying the entire equation, or equations, so that the coefficients of this variable term are the same. So what we can see is we're going to eliminate the y's. So what we need is that these two coefficients, the 1y and the 2y, we need to make them so that they're the same, so that when we add or subtract to carry out the elimination, it will disappear. So what I need to do is multiply the first equation by 2. And when I do this, I get 8x squared minus 2x plus 2y equals negative 6. The second equation I don't have to multiply, so I'm going to bring it across. But notice that everything is still lined up. And be really careful and match everything up so that it does match. So you have the x squares, the x's, the y's, and the constants. All right, so in order to eliminate my y's, if I add, I will still have the y's there. So what I need to do is I need to subtract. So I'll make a big subtraction symbol there. So I have 8x squared minus 0 is still going to be 8x squared. Negative 2 minus 3 will give me negative 5x. 2y minus 2y is 0, so I don't have to write that down. And then negative 6 minus negative 9 is positive 3. Now we're going to move everything to one side. So I have 8x squared minus 5x minus 3 equals 0. And let's see. To solve this equation, I can actually factor. So we can see that if we put 8 and 1, and using my guess and check method, 8 times 1, I can see that 8 times negative 1 will give me negative 8, and then 1 times 3 will give me 3. So negative 8 plus 3 will give me negative 5. And 3 times negative 1 gives me the negative 3. So recall that this is one of my factors. So I have 8x plus 3, and then 1 times negative 1. So this will be x minus 1. And this equals 0. If you forget how to factor, you can watch some of my uh, old videos on factoring. Okay. So we can set each part equal to 0. Now you don't have to show this part, but if you do want to, you can write this down. So 8x plus 3 equals 0. 8x equals negative 3. So x equals negative 3 eighths. And then the other one is 1. All right, so those are my x values. So I need to now plug these x values into either equation to get my y. So I like to put it into the linear so that we don't have any squares there. Okay, so I have 3 times negative 3 eighths plus 2y equals negative 9. So I have negative 6, oh, not negative 6, I have negative 9, I mean, over 8 plus 2y. And let's get the common denominator now. I can see that I need to join it with the 8. So this will be times 8 on the top and bottom. So I have negative 72 over 8. And now I'm going to add the 9 eighths to my right side. So I have 2y is equal to negative 63 over 8. Divide both sides by 2. Or you can also think of multiplying both sides by a half. So I have y is equal to negative 63 over 16. All right, so one of my solutions is negative 3 eighths and negative 63 over 16. Okay, now plugging in 1 and doing the same thing, I get 3 times 1 plus 2y equals negative 9. So I have 2y, moving the 3 over, I get negative 12. Dividing both sides by 2, I get negative 6. So then my other solution, when I plug in 1, is I get negative 6. So make sure that you match them up correctly. I suggest maybe to write the solutions down as you solve them, so you don't get them 
mix up or mix and matched. All right, the last type of um, equation that I'm going to show you is a quadratic, a quadratic equation. Now, we typically use the elimination method to solve a quadratic, quadratic. So we want to eliminate the term that contains a single variable that is in both equations. So that if there's only a single variable in each equation, then you can choose. Now, what do I mean by a single equation? So if you look at this example here, we see that we have x squared plus y, and we have an 8x in the first equation. The second one has an x squared, a y, and also a 7x. So the single variable that I'm talking about is the y, because we have an x squared and an x, and the second one also has an x squared and an x, but the y's are kind of what we would call our single ones. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite it so that I have a little bit more space. So I have x squared. And if you want, you can also move everything to one side. But you actually don't need to in this one because everything's already lined up. So the most important thing is that all of your variables are lined up properly. So I have my x squareds, I have my y's, I have my x's, and then I have my constants. This one here is great. I can already eliminate because if I add, my y's will be eliminated. So I'm going to add. So x squared plus x squared is 2x squared. y plus negative y is 0. My equal sign comes down. That's in the middle. 8x plus 7x is 15x. And then 19 plus negative 11 is positive 8. So notice that everything is still in the same spot. My x squares, I have 0 for y. My equal sign is still in the middle. And then 15x plus 8. Now I need to move everything to one side so that I can set it up as a quadratic equation that equals 0 so that I can solve. Now this one again is factorable. So this actually factors 2, 2x and x. And then we also get plus 1 and then minus 8. So you can check that this is negative 16x. And this is plus 1x, so I get negative 15. 2 times 1 is 2. 1 times negative 8 gives me the negative 8 constant. So my two solutions are x equals negative 1 half and 8. So substituting this in, now really you don't have a choice because both of them have the squared. However, I do like the first one because it has a positive y. So I'm going to put the negative 1 half. I'm going to square that, plus y equals 8 times negative 1 half, and then plus 19. So now I have y equals 8 times negative 1 half is negative 4, plus 19, and then half, negative 1 half times negative 1 half is a quarter. When I move it to the right side, I get negative a quarter. So negative 4 plus 19 is 15, and then 15 minus a quarter means that I have 14 and three quarters. So one of my solutions is then negative a half and 14 and three quarters. And then my other one, I'm going to plug in eight. So I have eight squared plus y equals eight times eight plus 19. So that's nice. Eight squared and the eight times eight, those cancel off. So I only have y equals 19. So my other solution is 8, 19. So two solutions again, probably because the two parabolas intersect at two points. Now notice that I've done this all without a calculator, so a calculator is actually not needed um, as long as you know how to add fractions.